Christmas lights. Last night, I convinced my husband to walk around the neighborhood and look at Christmas lights. He wasn't thrilled that it was cold, but he knew it was something I loved to do, and he didn't want me walking around alone in the dark, so he came with me. We strolled through streets with red, white and green twinkling lights, snowmen, reindeer and nativity scenes. Then we came upon a street we didn't even know existed. I guess we just never came this far down and assumed it was a cul-de-sac, my husband stated, perplexed, but trying to make sense out of why a street seemed to have appeared out of nowhere in the neighborhood we had lived in for nearly a decade. Let's walk down it. Maybe we'll end up recognizing it. I doubted that, but followed anyway as he continued walking. The first thing I noticed was how dark everything was. I mean, the houses weren't just devoid of Christmas lights, but there weren't any street lamps either. No windows showed a glow of electricity. No porch lights flickered. Babe, I said tremulously, these houses are all abandoned. I don't think we should walk down here. I was making excuses though. The lights of our neighbors were fading away behind us and I felt a nauseous pit developing in my stomach. The hair on my arms and neck was raised and I felt, wrong. I tugged on my husband's arm and planted my feet. I refused to walk any further. Something was wrong. My husband didn't even pause to look at me. He kept walking, not letting go of my hand. He was so much bigger and stronger than me, he ended up dragging me. Scott. I yelled, what are you doing? Stop. He didn't. I fell, and two things happened. First, my hand slipped from his grip, and second, I hit my face on the concrete. He still didn't stop. My loving, devoted husband left me lying there on the sidewalk, in the dark, injured. I screamed his name. He paused, turned and stared at me. No emotion. Then he turned back, and continued down the street. I cried. I had no idea what was wrong with him, but I knew it had to do with this street. There was a malicious and malignant evil in the very air we were breathing, and it seemed that Scott had been overtaken by it. Though I was terrified, I had no real choice but to follow him. I couldn't leave him wandering around in a trance-like state to do who knows what. I followed him, but at a distance. I didn't trust him. Something about him was no longer my husband. I only hoped it would leave him when we got the hell off this street. I knew the street couldn't be too long because the local elementary school should be just on the other side of the hill we were now walking up. It must end at the woods before the school property. I prayed when we got there that Scott would simply turn around and walk back the other direction, out. That didn't happen though because we never got to the end of the street. It kept going and going and I knew that where we were was an impossibility. Suddenly, Scott stopped. He turned to the right and walked up the stairs to the porch of a dilapidated old two-story house. My heart pounded as I watched him from the safety of the sidewalk. He ignored me completely as he raised a hand and knocked on the door three times. On the third knock exactly, a light flashed on inside the house and the door creaked open. I cried softly as I observed my husband disappear inside. The door slammed shut behind him and the light was extinguished. I didn't have any idea what to do. After a few minutes contemplating my options, I decided going in the house after him would be foolish. I would be better off going home and finding help. I turned and ran back towards the entrance to the ominous street, glancing over my shoulder periodically. I ran and ran and ran for what seemed like forever and never got any closer to the lights I should be referring to. The familiar neighborhood never appeared. I knew I had been running far longer than I should have, based on how far we walked in to begin with. Finally, I stopped and screamed in frustration. I turned back and nearly passed out to see the house I'd been running from. The house my husband had entered more than a mile back, right in front of me. It wanted me to go in. I felt exhausted, beaten down and hopeless. At least my Scott was inside, I thought. I knocked three times. The light flashed on. The door creaked slowly open. I backed up. Before I entered the house, I wanted to leave a record of what had happened. In case Scott and I don't reappear. I typed the words into the subreddit in hopes that someone who reads my account will be able to find us or comment and let us know how to save ourselves. If not, maybe you can send someone after us. I have to go now. The light from the house is so warm and inviting. There's smoke curling from the chimney now and I hear my husband's voice singing Christmas carols. It smells like dinner is almost ready, I'm so glad we found our dream house. I don't ever want to leave. Come visit us, please. We'd love to invite you in.